Hey everyone, welcome to the next video in my India series. This one is of another subject that I spotted in Varanasi, which is honestly the best city I've ever been to for art reference photography. Everywhere you turn your camera, anywhere you look, there's interesting subjects all around. It's just endless. You could spend hours and hours in one spot and you just see interesting people coming by everywhere you look. Unbelievable. Anyways, let's get down to the business of painting. You see me using a lot of Gamsol mixed in with my paint. Gamsol is uh, a turpentine that's uh, odorless. And the reason why I used a lot of Gamsol in the background is I wanted the paint to be super thinned out to let the texture of this Artifacts panel show through. This is an aluminum panel that Artifacts primed with lead white and they gave this perfect grainy texture that I just love. And if you thin out the paint, it can let the paint get in the grooves of the texture and show it off to great effect. And at the same time, the panel actually takes detail pretty well. And you can take advantage of that texture once again by using dry brushing, like we did in the previous video. The subject this time is the ever elusive Agori Baba which is a group of Shiva devotees that are considered to be quite extreme in their rituals. They usually dwell around crematoriums like in Varanasi and they smear the ash of cremated bodies all over themselves. This man in particular was entirely covered in it and uh, that's why I was interested in painting him. You know, people say a lot of things about Agori Babas. I don't know how much of it is true and how much of it is not, but they're definitely an interesting subject. It is said that they practice dark magic and they wear human bones on their body, like the necklace of this man right here. They drink out of skulls and they meditate on corpses, as well as apparently sometimes eat the corpses, among other inappropriate things. I don't know how much validity there is to that, it could just be legends. But I think the idea of their philosophy is to get closer to Nirvana through renouncing pretty much everything that's pleasurable and contemplating the nature of death until they reach their spiritual goals in pretty much the most unpleasant way humanly possible. I'm very fascinated with them. The belief of a Nagori is based on two principles about Shiva. One, that Shiva is indeed perfect, and two, that Shiva is responsible for everything that occurs. That being the case, everything that happens must actually be perfect, and to deny the perfection of anything by being disgusted, fearful, or complaining about anything would be also to deny the sacredness of Shiva himself, who is the supreme being in their mind. So they practice these difficult rituals of meditating on a corpse, eating dead human flesh, sometimes eating excrement or drinking out of skulls to get rid of different inhibitions and judgments. They feel that it's wrong to judge anything as bad. So they do all the things that we consider unpleasant and bad on a daily basis in order to train their mind to accept them because Shiva is perfect in their mind. I myself am not a believer in any religion, but what I do respect about the Goris is that their philosophy actually has an internal logic to it. If Shiva is perfect, then all things that happen are perfect. And if all things are perfect, then there's nothing that's bad. And if there's nothing that's bad, then there should be nothing stopping you from doing the things that the rest of humanity considers bad to do. There is an internal logic there and I, I do respect the skin in the game that they have by actually taking action on their philosophy and living that way, aside from just talking about it. But anyways, besides this man's philosophy, I also find it very interesting to try and get the effect of ash on human skin. So although this man is thickly covered in the ash, it still has some transparency. 
So you have to look for opportunities for the warmth of the skin to show through. I have some on the nose and you can especially see the skin of the man in the transitions between the forehead and the hair. And there's some spots in the crevices of his eyes that he wasn't able to fully cover. You have to seek out these opportunities to show that this is the material of this man is actually human skin covered in ash. That he's not actually as pale as a ghost naturally. That's very key to this painting and I hope I was able to convey the transparency of this ash on the man's skin. I'm also loving how the ash emphasizes the structure in this man's face. The direct light shows off all the wrinkles and crevices on his forehead in a beautiful way. His facial hair is beautifully covered in ash as well and gives us plenty of opportunities to make awesome brush strokes that are designed in an attractive way. There's something that I'm about to do in this painting that's worth noting. I'm going back into these shadows right now with a small brush and creating these darker lines at the edges between the shadow and where the light hits his cheek again. These darker lines, they make the crevices deeper and they emphasize the quality of the light. I find that the sensation of the light is much stronger with these lines present than before. Right now I'm doing something subtle, yet very important to the final result of the painting. I'm putting in these very subtle warm tones. Not too warm, but just enough to make you feel there is a temperature change. And the reason why is that plane of the brow ridge is actually facing downwards where there is a sand colored floor made of clay and the light is bouncing into it and bouncing back up into all the planes that are facing downwards. So it helps to have that little warm tile there. Besides, even though he's covered in white, you don't want this painting to end up looking monochrome, grayscale. You want to find opportunities for little temperature changes here and there. So I find them in the downward facing planes with the warms and with the cools, I find some upward facing planes in the shadows, like in the shadow of his eyes near the cheek, there's a plane that receives a little bit of blue from the sky above. And those are important to make sure your painting doesn't feel monochrome. On the other hand, when you see those colors, you gotta try not to overdo them because if I make that too warm or the cold tile too blue it's gonna stop feeling like he's covered in a white ash so you have to keep it within the parameters of the material you're working on the hair i'm working on now is a great opportunity to show off some carefree brush strokes and to design them in a cool flowy way Now it's time to figure out how you're going to convey the necklace in paint. For me, I didn't want this to feel photographic and look very specific. I wanted to give the impression of a necklace with lots of little dangly items. I didn't want to have to paint each one. So now I'm finding a way to use palette knife to give the impression of some bones hanging there, little pieces of bones. That's as distinct from painting them directly. The ability to denote things and to hint at things makes paintings much more exciting to look at, to me, than painting them directly. So here we are, another favorite piece of mine from my India series. I love this subject. You can see my photo reference on the right a little bit there. This was an awesome opportunity to design some cool looking brush strokes and to use the texture that's inherent in the artifacts panel to my advantage in the background. The hair was an opportunity to use my bristle brushes to show off a hairy texture. Overall, I really had really good time painting this guy, and I just love painting subjects from India. Can't get enough of it. We got one more left, guys.